done. Oh, look, they take little tiny pieces. There won't even be a scar. I think I found the problem. Oh, come on, you're the doctor. Everyone, lights out and quiet. Welcome, Wayward Movie Watchers, once again to another episode of the Media Morgue. The Media Morgue. Uh, uh, where movies come to be examined. I am Nat Love, and I'm joined by my fellow surgeons of cinema. Uh, cream corn? I can't hear myself. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, let me... There we go. Okay. Can we start again? Dynamite! <laughs> dynamite! <laughs> dun, 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 dun. dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, guys, uh, welcome back to um, another episode. We're very happy to be here. Uh, today we are talking about... The Harder They Fall, which is a recent mm-hmm. Netflix yeah, release, yeah. star-studded as heck. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's my week to pick. It's finally, uh, you know, it, we, we kind of bounced around the order a little bit, but uh, I decided to go with uh, Black Dynamite from 2009. Um, black exploitation movies that finally made yeah. its media yeah. mark. <laughs> and a, a black exploitation parody yeah, specifically. Yeah. These are both black exploitation movies. Is the well, harder can, they fall? We can, we can, we can talk about most that. Certainly, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we, yeah, can, yeah. we can talk about that. But uh, uh, um, of course, before the reviews, we have the news. So. Um, what are we talking about today, gents? Dan, you want to go first? Uh, yeah, there's there's nothing really funny about this. I just think it's it's very uh, interesting. A twenty four just published this um this like compendium of oh, uh, movie it. memorabilia mm-hmm. uh, li- like like marketing ploys called uh, for promotional use only, um, and it kind of just documents like the ways that we've been like trying to viral market movies and stuff. If you can even call it that, I mean, so some of these just look like um things that you get on opening night when you see a movie. We have Fargo paper shredders. We have uh, uh, a rolling papers I was gonna, from yeah, Friday. Rolling papers from <laughs> yeah. Friday. Um, that sounds great. That sounds a great. A parent trap fanny pack. Uh, a Japanese eraser head poster, which doubles as a mask hmm. that you cut out and wear while you're watching the movie uh, in Japan. Uh, a Wayne, Wayne's World uh, studded cup of some kind. I don't really know what that is. Fa- <laughs> false eyelashes for Miss Congeniality too. All these things are on um, auction right now. And how much e- are they going for? I, some of these things are going for several hundred. Like uh, the Friday rolling papers are going for 260 which is less than you would think. Yeah, You'd yeah, think yeah. that it'd be worth a bit more. Uh, I'm sure it's going to kill And, and they're doing all of this to hide the fact that A24 is embezzling money through their mm-hmm. merch right. website. No, of course, of course. Um, I think this is really cool, though. It is. It is some of these things I would never... Um, come across i mean i know that when i saw french dispatch for example they gave me like a pen and sometimes they were giving out posters that might sometimes when you see movies opening night in imax they give you posters a pen Uh, to write with or a pen to a pen that you stick on i I remember like a typewriter when i saw a parasite when it first came out at ifc they had these posters and they had different characters on it Mm -hmm. if you flipped them they were different that's awesome yeah it was cool the most i've ever gotten was when i saw amazing spider-man 2 and they were giving out action figures they were were giving Um, out uh (laughs) They were giving out just little Gwen Stacy's with the, <laughs> with the broken, broken neck. <laughs> yeah. This is very interesting, though, because um, I, I just kind of love how it's kind of a, a time capsule. I mean, I, I would probably, you know, spend a couple hours flipping through this book. And mm-hmm. just, I mean, like Jackass, Whoopee Cushions, and I mean, I mean th- there, there's all kinds have of you, interesting Have you looked here. at what A24 has auctioned off from their own movies, like The Lighthouse Light? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know what's wild? This and actually the, uh, the actual Furby from Uncut Jones. So this this will dovetail great into my Furby. news, but uh, there was a really big bidding war when Midsum- Midsommar came out over the May Queen dress. Yeah. And mm. Ariana Grande apparently is a giant fan of Midsommar. She's seen it nine times. Okay. And so she, and she so lost and she and she lost out and she was very upset. Who about got it? it? Uh, probably a museum. Um, mm. But um, speaking of Ariana Grande. Mm. Yeah. Um, I know Justin is a big fan of In the Heights, the film. Yes, um, it's my favorite. And is very excited for the follow-up to In the Heights, also by um, the same director, and it will be John Chu, and it will be um, Wicked, the famous Wizard of Oz musical. So that's finally happening. It's finally happening. It just cast its lead. They rumored that for years. They Mm. did. I think they they pushed it into production after uh, a couple of these musicals really hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he probably sealed this deal before In the Heights uh, hit. I'll be honest, um, though. Movie musicals cannot catch a fucking break. They cannot. <laughs> also, <laughs> Dear I, I, Evan Hansen, uh, Cats. I don't know. I don't uh, know In the how. Heights to a lesser degree. I don't know how Wicked. Um, I don't know how Wicked's going to transition over. First of all, it's. A, I love that show. It's a great show, but it's also like a 
Bush administration era show sure, uh, yeah. with some dated politics mm-hmm. and a weird uh, black metaphor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and they're just going to drive home with it. Cynthia Erivo has been cast as Alphaba, which, you know, has Is that the, the bad? That's, witch. that's the I Wicked haven't seen Witch. Wicked it's witch. the Wicked Witch of the West. The um, bad one. I highly <laughs> recommend it. Cynthia Erivo is, is, is an incredible singer and actress. Um, you know, she's just, you know, she, these are supposed to be college aged women. Yeah, uh, Ariana Grande right. is almost 30. Cynthia Erivo is 34. And they look young. Like, it's not like, and it, also movies, who cares? But but also, I, I think you could have gotten some unknowns. I think here. the ways it, it, it leads directly into Wizard of Oz is pretty interesting. I, Especially because so Wizard of Oz is like someone's schizophrenic like yeah. daydream um <laughs> but but wicked like reveals that like the witch and the scarecrow were like lovers yeah oh, okay. and like and, and yeah. that um those glenda books? the good witch and and the wicked witch were like college roommates yeah and stuff. Oh, okay like, have you have you read the book dan the book is of weird. wicked or of the wizard of oz uh, 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 of wicked no I so not. wicked so the book wicked is even weirder than the musical they've sanded off the edges in the musical uh-huh. there's four wicked books and they follow parallel with the Oz books, not yeah, the movie, because yeah. the musical kind of oh, parallels so they're happening the at the same time as the, as okay, the books cool. in the way that the musical kind of does follows it, the movie. It, mm. Am I uh, wrong, or does Wicked have like Dorothy coming? She, she does. Is, she like, splashes um, the water. The, under. the silhouette yeah. of the water. And in and, 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 yeah. and, and the musical, it's like oh, that was a that was a rumor. She doesn't actually. That's how they. That's how they get one over. Spoilers for Wicked, yeah. uh, a fifteen year old musical. But like, <laughs> Sorry, but just like the, the the big gag at the end is that a, the, a lot of the rumors around the witch isn't true. So they used the water myth to hide her so she can get out of Oz. Forget oh. everything um, you thought you knew about but the Wizard, the Wizard of Oz. Of Oz. <laughs> I mean, look, look, I'm going to watch this movie. I like Wicked. I'm sure both of these actresses will kill it. Um, I just I just kind of feel like with yeah. stuff like that, with, yeah, with yeah. roles that are this high profile, they could have gotten Broadway actors that are not big yet. I could have sworn that uh, Oz the Great and Powerful was supposed to be a oh, Wicked wow. movie. Me too, me too. I, I, I like, it, remem- is I remember it is a Wicked movie. I, I, it I is. don't know about that, but I, I remember <laughs> hearing like when it was coming out that it was supposed to be Wicked and then that's weird. Ramy like did his own thing. That movie is literally uh, the Wizard of Oz sleeping with all three of the witches. Kind of, yeah. And that's the movie. That's the right. plot of the and movie. James Franco is, is playing the wizard. And it was supposed right. to be Tobey Maguire. Uh-oh. Really? Yeah. That would have been cool. That would have been, <laughs> in my opinion. He would have been a really good bullshit artist. Yeah. Yeah. He would have just tapped into that he's poker got, playing. Got uh, so the, re- the reason I say it's not really wicked is because I don't think he's really humanizing like the wicked witch in that one. She's kind of just like a cartoony evil. No, witch I mean at the beginning movie. she's 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 a human being, and then he fucks her over. And mm. yeah, dude, he, I saw it once. Like, yeah, I did too. Ago, I remember so this. I can't. I remember, guys, guys, your your knowledge of. The Ozverse mm-hmm. is suspect. You gotta. Uh, yeah, it was I, the first like major right uh, listen, universe <laughs> established in books and listen, shit. It Lord, was like Oz and the Lord of the Rings. Lord, <laughs> Lord willing, when we eventually get to Wicked in about a year and a half, whenever that movie comes out, we'll put it with Return to Oz and just scare yeah, the yeah. fuck out of the kids. Oh, that movie's fucking trippy. That movie is dude. wild. That movie's Return wild. To Oz. That I didn't even know that there was a. I didn't even know there were other books. Not in the like, 80s. I'm learning just, so much. Justin, there's there's like a subgenre of Oz. Yeah, yeah. Media that's just what if the Wizard of Oz was mm-hmm. scary? And okay. It's like Return to Oz, Tin Man, Oz, <laughs> the HBO show with yes. all the prison raids. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah, about yeah. the Wizard of Oz too. That's the best mm-hmm. spinoff there is. No, no just no, we're no, fucking. No, no. With you. <laughs> 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 I was there. Yeah, it's the, like the, they made a solo with Oz. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's going on? Okay, wow. The Wiz. Yeah, the Wiz. It's scary, yeah. but that one's scary because they're black. And well, it's <laughs> <laughs> My <laughs> sister's school put on a production of The Wiz. Was really? It, did, it have, did it have black people in it? Yeah. Because I've heard of... Well, that's why they called it The Wiz and not The Wizard of Oz because no, the cast was like all no, black. No, 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 because I'm asking because my, my one of my best friends, Sam Casey, I hope is listening to this, uh, was in a production of The Wiz in high school and they didn't have enough black people. So really? he, he was the Wizard of Oz. Oh. And he is one of the whitest men on the planet. There was, uh, <laughs> there was footage going around of... Uh, of an In the Heights high school production uh, yes, I uh, where it was like all white kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, stuff like that happens in high school because they, they, they really want to capitalize on this play. Yeah. Right? My old middle school had a, a viral uh, stint recently on, on TikTok. Really? It was for Martin Luther King Day and it was, it was a slideshow <laughs> of, of MLK and, and like um, civil rights like leaders or whatever and they were doing like TikTok dances on no, the stage while the slideshow was no, playing behind them a bunch no. of white kids. I'll, I'll, I'm going to do you one better, Dan. My school used to do this thing called the August Wilson monologue competition yeah. where everybody would do monologues from August Wilson as a competition uh-huh. and uh, <laughs> yeah. as, as the title says and there was a lot of white kids who participated uh, I assumed to be able to say the n-word uh, yeah. and uh, one of those videos of one, you bet wow. and one of those young women who was in it very blonde young woman her video <laughs> like leaked onto like an all-black theater wow 
Facebook group. You're probably part of that. Ooh. And they were cooking her ass. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I could come in here and say that this is my high school, or I, I could, could just yeah, I be could quiet. interrupt. <laughs> yeah. But the fate of her universe <laughs> is not <laughs> worth risking the fate of all of it. Um, yeah. Well, speaking of multiversal uh, nonsense, we got this Morbius trailer. Uh, um, and uh, you know what was interesting for me in the wake of this is how many people came up to me over the past few days and were like, yo, Justin, so like Morbius, is he like uh-huh. a character that I should know yeah. about? Or like, no. like I couldn't, I, I guess I didn't realize how D-list that character is. I mean, maybe this is just how deep in my uh-huh. nerd am I, but I'm like, yeah, Morbius, he's, he's one of the Spider-Man He's villains. like E-list, he's like F. He, he, how lucky did Sony get buying Spider-Man in the 90s and not even realizing they get, got all the rights all to this those, E-list yeah. shit? <laughs> Silver Sable and Morbius and like yeah. Venom and like all this shit they could build their but, own corner of a but, cinematic but the, universe But with. like Morbius was... Was one of my favorite Spider-Man villains as a kid, probably because of the cartoon. Yeah, but the '90s cartoon. Yeah, is dude, sick. I was because, gonna because say that scared me. As dude, a kid. with the blade crossover. Yeah, yeah, dude, it was so cool. Yeah. But like Morbius, I, I love that show. I don't give a fuck about Morbius on his own. No, 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 I only care all. about Morbius because he's like Spider-Man's. Like, damn, he's, he's a Spider-Man's vampire. Dracula, yeah. yeah, he's Spider-Man's Dracula. Spider-Man's afraid he's gonna fuck his girlfriend. Like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff going on <laughs> yeah. with Morbius. It's a, can- it's a canon fear. No, the uh, yeah, this this is of course the uh, the film coming out next year, starring Jared Leto in the principal role, uh, and some other people like, it, i just cannot get excited for that it's guy. it's just got the same like steel blue mm-hmm. like color palette that venom it had. looks the exact same as venom and the and and, and of course they're not withholding the the heavy-handed references he straight up makes a venom meme joke yeah. at the end of this he goes i'm venom just kidding i'm dr michael morbius mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like why why would you even how does that make sense in the universe like, venom is, isn't even that like it makes sense in an mcu movie when they're like hey like could you ask tony stark to come to my son's birthday right, and, and Winter Soldier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Venom is like Venom is just this a creepy pasta <laughs> in that universe. Ven- it's like holy shit! Like I, I got a picture of the fucking but, goo monster. But, <laughs> but this <laughs> suggests this suggests in the Venom verse or whatever, whatever universe this ends up shaking into. Right uh, after uh, No Way Home or whatever, uh, it suggests that Venom is like a thing that people across the country yeah, yeah, know yeah. about. Like this weird guy in a hoodie He's that's a always sweaty. Story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're like, "Oh yeah, Venom bit off that guy's head in a bodega." And I mean, mm-hmm. it, it would be uh, listen. I haven't seen Let There Be Carnage. I don't know when I will. Um, but I feel like the the, the appeal. There's no need. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, the appeal of that character is the way he looks. Period. Like mm-hmm. you yeah. know, Venom is a cool looking dude. He looks metal. Yeah, yeah, but it's like you know, one of the things I I remember from that first Venom movie is thinking that the tone, like I wasn't sure how confident it was mm-hmm. in its tone. Mm-hmm. I didn't know whether it wanted to be a Gonzo like action comedy, yes. or if it wanted to be a horror movie. Yes. The second one is like a self parody. Uh, uh. And it, like Tom Hardy is really hamming it up, and he's yeah. he's he's like making fun of the voice he did in the first right. Venom movie. Yeah. You know, Tom Hardy loves playing Venom. I'm sure he does. I, I mean, love getting a paycheck. Easy pay- I was gonna say, <laughs> I love getting paid. <laughs> but okay, but I so I watched the first Venom for the first time a couple weeks ago, and that movie feels like it almost wants to be a comedy, but it right. needs to hold on to this weird 2003 superhero aesthetic. Yeah, exactly. And it's like just be funny. Like Venom is a dumb character. Mm-hmm. Just and now Venom's gonna help Spider Man in No Way Home. I think they fight. Well, cause no way. Some he, reason. Well, well, the, the after credits, the, the after credits of the Spoilers last Venom, for Venom movie. Too, is, sorry, guys. <laughs> I mean, I know you're all biting at the bit to see that one. Um, the after credits, he's like. Eddie, uh, our our kind has been through so much yeah. turmoil. We have such a history, and then like the worlds collide, and like um, Tom Holland comes up on the TV right. screen, and he's like, um, "That guy, Ugh, I hate that guy," and he gets up and like licks the screen, he looks and tasty, so yeah. it kind of uh, insinuates that like the symbiotes have interdimensional knowledge, and yes. it, which means they're aware of the Topher Grace Venom from Spider-Man oh, Three. Well, right, yeah, that's they, what that's like directly what that's right. implying. Yeah. Because Don't they have wound, to. I wasn't even but thinking. You can't of, kill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was. Thinking, I like that line. I know you're being funny, but I like that. No, no, can't kill. no. I, I, I like. I he's like. A, he's a weird actor. I like Topher Grace's Venom. I know this is a controversial I think that question. Line is very good. I think he's good because he's just like a. He's just like a fucking loser. Mm-hmm. Like he's a loser, and he has all this power now, and he's like, I'm just gonna be. Well, well imagine some guy he, you fought like ten years ago showing up to your house never wound, but you can't kill. Yeah. That's a good line. It is. I was gonna say he's a, he is really evil Peter Parker in yeah. that he's. Yeah. Yeah. He's just as much of a dork, but he he takes that power and he doesn't keep the responsibility that he should have. And right. Maybe we're doing a revisionist review of Spider Man Three on this uh, show. Spider Man <laughs> Three, it's a solid Spider-Man movie. Three. We, we do this in oh, our yeah. in our news segment yeah. all the time. We review like yeah. little movies. Yeah. That yeah. Listen, listen, guys, Spider Man Three is in the top 
five Spider Man movies. It's a fucking good movie. It's in the t- it's not time a good has movie. been kind. Hey, yeah, relax. No, 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 no. Relax I think it is. I think it's a good. Relax here. Relax here, pal. There's been a good. lot of bad Spider Man movies. All right. If yeah. Zach was on, he would bash me for saying that. But <laughs> I do like it a lot. It has a better villain than uh, any of those uh, Andrew Garfield movies. It's true. It's true. But no. I, to, to to circle back to um, uh, we'll talk about the Venom thing off air. I just wanted to circle back to Morbius real quick. One of the other <laughs> things that's weird is that uh, it, they stop the trailer stone cold mm-hmm. in the middle to have Michael Keaton turn to the camera. Hey Doc! Oh my God! <laughs> so say, weird. Hey guys, you you ready? It's happening. Like, uh, well, <laughs> I'm sorry, Jared Leto was a cult leader. He, he <laughs> I'm not I'm not kidding. Like he actually is a cult. He has yeah. a cult. Yeah. He didn't know about COVID for like eight weeks because he was on like a cult <laughs> retreat yeah. deep in the woods with his little followers, and then he found out about COVID. Why? Like, shouldn't it. we be canceling cult leaders? <laughs> Should we be canceling cult leaders? Yeah. yeah. I think that uh, being a cult leader is a bad thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, don't most people agree that that's not a good thing to be? He also, the, I mean, I don't know. I he's mean, a groomer too, isn't he? Yeah. Is he? That I think there were some allegations that came out. I remember of that underage. And also, yeah, like, we, there's allegations. Jared Leto's listening to the medium work right now, just bawling. <laughs> <laughs> it's God damn it. There's allegations of him just being a fucking terrible actor yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're under the impression that Jared I think Leto, his band sucks too. J- oh, stop! Stop! <laughs> Dan, Dan is flying off. That I listen. He's he's fine. In I, I loved it. I loved it when for about five years in two thousand from two thousand ten to two thousand fifteen. Uh, 30 Seconds to Mars was the only trailer music. Yeah. That was the only... Like, I have some 30 Seconds to Mars saved on YouTube. Like, I, I had, I have a yeah. rock playlist on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> 30 Seconds it's to good Mars. Shit. It's nice. <laughs> the hurricane, the kill, yeah. They they really went like, Jared Leto, you're a good actor. Here's an Oscar. Now play every single yeah, exactly. role. Every villain, too. Every weird, like, uh, I just, that you can. Oh, my God. So He's Morty, in that Gucci movie. Which, which also, <laughs> I mean, maybe just to tie this up real quick. Uh, one Gucci. Of the, one <laughs> he sounds like in the movie. You made the real fire Crack, uh, hey. I'm at that. Maybe he should have played Mario. Uh, but <laughs> Mario is normal yeah. now, Justin. Uh, yeah, he's not Italian anymore. I he's was just normal. gonna say that now um, he sounds like a corn-fed uh, <laughs> Memphis boy, <laughs> o- Oklahoma Mario. <laughs> Those yeah, little being ableist to his children. Yeah. Um, did y'all hear about that? I did. Yeah. Where he was like a healthy children. Uh, just did An- didn't didn't Anna Faris Anna Faris's child was born eight weeks early. Yeah, like premature. Yeah. What the fuck? For everyone man. at home, we're talking about Chris Pratt uh, again. Chris Pratt. <laughs> I can't. Just Chris Pratt can't can't always Chris catches rays on Chris this show. Chris Pratt is playing Garfield, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is like, I guess, is good casting because mm-hmm. he's a he's an asshole. It makes a little more around. sense than yeah. Mario, but um, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I saw a tweet from David Ayer. He's still trying to ride this Snyder cut wave and get I'm the sure Ayer cut is. released for Suicide Squad. Does he have a movie he about posted, angry men to to make? I'm sure he does. Is he making a Twelve Angry Men movie? I wish. No. I think he just means all his films are about angry dudes. Okay. <laughs> go, go ahead. Jason. But he posted a picture of Jared Leto, and he said, um, you know, uh, Jared killed it, but nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I said, what killed the pig that he left in Viola Davis's trailer? Like, <laughs> we found killed, out about that. Killed uh, thousands of potential children when he came in a condom and, like, left it in Margot Robbie's. <laughs> yeah. uh, didn't he, like, send Margot Robbie's used condom? I yeah, think, or a, and a dead rat was and involved. Then, yeah, you yeah. know what's so funny? That was part of the viral marketing for that movie. Mm-hmm. And then, <laughs> years later, he was like, I think those stories got away from me. Like, <laughs> that wasn't really what happened. As soon as you made the decision to do it. <laughs> also, uh, all of that weird shit he did for, what, five minutes of movie? Exactly. Yeah. Doesn't he even get his ass beat by Batman in that a- movie. Apparently, it was enough for, like, a an hour-long Joker movie. Of but, what? Um, what is he doing in the hour-long Joker movie? Here's the thing. I, I don't care. Just licking to... Margot Robbie's cheek exactly. and shooting Tommy guns, I guess. It's, yeah. It's... All right. But anyway, Morbius is going to be bad. Uh, I hope you're <laughs> listening to this, Jared Leto. Yeah, come on the show, Jared. We just want to talk. Don't, no, don't come on no, the show. No, we just want to talk. Uh, we're going to take a, our first break and then come back to talk about The Heart of They Fall. Oh, my God. Oh, 
All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, like we said up top, we're talking about The Harder They Fall, a 2021 yes, sir, yes, sir. American yes. revisionist Western film. Let's, let's talk about yeah. Cowboys. I'm that, I'm that love. Yeah. Who, who, who would, who would you be in a, in, a, in a Western? I think I'd be the, the fat guy who they stick up on the train. I'm like, well, I don't know much, if anything, about this here big city talk. You might, I don't hardly know nothing about those McCluskey boys down here. You might be wanting to speak to them, and then they shoot me because I fucking reach for a can of beans in my pocket, and they thought it was a gun. I most certainly uh, RJ Siler here, where he's mm. like, he's like, I'm a faster arm than you, and then he lifts it up and gets shot through the cheek. Yeah. <laughs> Justin, you'd be the dastardly do eviler who mm. ties the lady up on the train tracks, yeah. and you're like, twirl my mustache, yeah, mustache yeah. Yeah. and I say, I, d- I do declare, yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> I do declare, everybody <laughs> gets steamrolled by the. By this 18 wheeler, how many wheels a train has? Huh? Exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing 18. Zach definitely is the bank teller that's like, whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa now. <laughs> Just a humble working man. <laughs> so this is the, this is directed by James Samuel, uh, aka The Bullets, who's a British. Yeah. multidisciplinary artist. Mm-hmm. A lot of his previous work has been um, music videos, actually. Cool. But he's known for uh, crafting um, yeah. scores. He, he did the soundtrack for The Great Gatsby in 2013. Oh, did he? Which, you know. another, and this is like another, that. M- another historical movie that is dry. Right. Well, mm-hmm. I was going to say the soundtrack itself in terms of being like anachronistic and having like, you know, yeah, yeah. in Jay-Z. this case, it's reggae and hip hop and, mm-hmm. and whatnot. Um, but yeah, this, this movie, basically it's like uh, black history, what if, and it, right. and it takes mm-hmm. a, a bunch of real life outlaws, black outlaws yeah, from puts them together. Yeah. And, 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 and says like, what if they shot each other? Um, mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and that's the concept. Uh, it's actually like black oceans 11. Kind of. Yeah. Right. It's like, it's like take all the biggest black stars of the era and put them together and have them do a little heist thing. Yeah. It's also like, well, if we took a bunch of Atlanta actors and actually let them act and not just yeah. gave them cameos and <laughs> stuff. And not just, made them, around. not just made them throw discs at uh, Richard Madden. Right. For, yeah, for right, that, that right, happen. right. Um, uh, just some, just trash talking Eternals real quick, but, um, uh, but yeah, I thought that, uh, we, you know, we thought this would be a good movie to watch because it, you know, anytime a movie like this comes out with a predominantly black cast, it, it, it starts conversations. It's doing super well. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I meant to watch one of the group interviews that they had at, on BBC, but, um, mm-hmm. I guess, you know, as always, I'm curious what your, uh, what you thought about this going in, what you were expecting and, uh, how you feel about it. I just love a spaghetti western. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I love like a loosey goosey, gory, uh, pulpy spaghetti western. Mm-hmm. I mean, it has a bunch of cool shots that remind me of like a Leone movie. There's yeah. um, the part where uh, where Keith Stanfield is is facing off against that um, what's that other actor? I haven't I haven't seen him anywhere else. Oh, He's really R. J. Good, R. J. Siler. R. J. Siler. Yeah, a la the Power Rangers movie. I, th- I wouldn't know. Excuse me. They're facing <laughs> off, and, and the camera's like um, Bird's an eye overhead, eye. and their shadows yeah, are taking yeah, up yeah. like the whole frame. It's very, very cool. It's got a lot of pulpy like Western yeah. shots like that. For sure. I uh, so I I think there's a lot of good in this movie. I definitely think uh, Jonathan Majors, man, like he's fucking what awesome. a good actor, he's dude. Great. Like I he's I, a th- revelation. I feel like in a lot of ways, like we've been looking for. Eh, I hate when people say this. I, I truly do. So so Justin, please punch me in the face when I finish this. I will. <laughs> but like whenever a new black actor pops up, he does one good performance, and they go, "Oh, this is the new Denzel Washington." Um, <laughs> that was me punching Wesley. And, Don't worry uh, about it. <laughs> and I'm not going to say Jonathan Majors is the new Denzel Washington. They're very different actors. Yeah. But in terms of uh, acting caliber that right. fast in their career, he's like the only one that's really batting with any with any kind mm-hmm. of frequency. Yeah. I think. I mean, I think he's, he's a great face. He has a great face. He's so expressive. Face. There's moments where the camera sits on his face and it cha- his face changes or scrunches and changes. And he's yeah. always better than the material he has, like mm. almost universally. Mm. Um, He's like the best part of Loki, and he's in it for like five minutes. Dude, he's so good. He's the best part of Lovecraft Country. He's like the best part of everything. Um, Really good in Defy Bloods. The last black man in San Francisco. Uh, Really good in that. But he's he's great. Delroy Lindo is my guy. I love him. Also, him and Jonathan Majors are a great team. I hope they do more movies together. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's too many movie stars in this movie, and I know that sounds weird, but it actually was beginning to throw me off because it it feels like it wants to be a spaghetti restaurant, like you said. It has a lot of Tarantino blood splatter, which is cool. Uh, yeah. Spray blood. Sure. Or this, uh, mm. It's very gory towards the end. And, it, and some it, of the exaggerated, like yeah. when he shoots that guy. And, and, and they do like the a bunch of flips. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and I love that. And it feels like, it's, it, it, it feels like it's mid-metamorphosis between being a movie that's like gr- grimy and grungy mm-hmm. and a movie that is really polished. And I think mm-hmm. the reason why it doesn't, it doesn't ever pick one side is because there's so many recognizable faces in it that don't totally... Yeah. 
Uh, you can't just have it be camp. Yeah, like like I think people like Lakeith are great in it. Like mm. I, I Lakeith is such has such a small role that I actually don't clock him as a movie star. But you know, as good as Regina King is in this movie, I was like, oh, that's Regina King. And it, yeah, and yeah. as good as well, no, she's not good. But as fine as Azzy Beats is in really? the movie, I think she's okay. As fine as well, Azzy Beats is in the movie, okay. I'm just like <laughs> yeah. I'm just like that's Azzy Beats. So yeah. so I feel yeah. like the movie doesn't ever become what it wants to be because it's being held back by. Some By the stuff. way, uh, I yeah. I believe she did recently uh, uh, correct the world on the pronunciation of her name. Zazi Zazi Bates. Mm. Oh. Bates. Uh, That's cool. But um, Beats is like cool if she's a DJ. As far as that polish goes, and, and how it is like a vehicle for for stars, mm. uh, I found myself like wishing it looked a bit like dirtier. Yeah, you know, me too. A, a bit grainier exactly. and pulpier. exactly. Uh, it looks very polished. It's so polished. Everyone is a supermodel, like in the 1800s. Dude, everyone's when, very sexy. When, when, yeah. when, when Jonathan Majors takes off his shirt, I'm like, why? Too ripped. Why is he so buff? Like, why are you buff? so ripped? You're, right, e- right. you're eating like squirrels. Yeah. Like you're <laughs> eating squirrels and beer. There's not, there's and, not and enough beans protein. from a can. There, uh, yeah, I, I think for me, um, as far as initial impressions, yeah, I, I, I thought it was, too, it was a bit too long. It, it, it comes long, in yeah. really hot mm. and it ends really nicely, but there's a there's a real like divot in the mm. middle there's where a lot, a lot the pacing is a little off. But yeah. what what Beautiful really sets and stuff, yes, like gorgeous costume design. I just wish it was filthy. Yeah. I, I like westerns to be dirty, like yeah. like Sergio Leone westerns. Everyone is like ugly and sweaty and covered Missing in like teeth. muck and yeah. shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no, I absolutely. I, I think what was what as far as the cast, um, you know, the standouts for me, Jonathan Majors. Um, you have this relatively new actress to me, Danielle Deadweiler, who plays uh, so Cuffy. Good. So good. I thought that was a cool <laughs> yeah, character. Yeah. Regina King doing a cool vocal performance here. But what really stood out to me is the fact that Idris Elba is at a point in his career now where his arrival into a movie is a point of anticipation. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Like, you're, like, you know he's in it from the advertisements, but yeah. they really build up to mm-hmm. like him coming out great of that. Sequence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, great the sequence. The train sequence the is train cool. The train sequence is great. I do have questions about the logic of it, and we don't really do a lot of nitpicking on This is not this kind of show. Yeah. But two things. One, one, what if that clearly racist conductor just kept driving? Exactly, the train <laughs> he ran over the horse. Yeah. Well, he, he, he was gonna. He, he said nincompoops. Yeah, right, exactly. right, and so. and then number two, why are they trans? This highly dangerous criminal mm. on like a passenger train. Yeah, I mean, like, this is like if you had Bane yeah. locked up on the six train well, yeah. in the last it's, car. It's, it's like if you had uh, it, it, like Manson yeah. being transported on an Amtrak to Philly. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. What, what, yeah, it seems it seems a little bit incongruous, but it's still a very nicely paced scene. Um, there, you know, we'll talk about it when we get to the second segment. There were a few different options I had for what to pair this with. Uh, the one that I went with, I, I really am glad I went with, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I just felt like, it was, yeah, it was a little bit average. Um, not to tip our hands too much of what the ratings are. Yeah. Wes, before we started recording, you said that you do believe that this is a black exploitation movie, and I wanted to get your yeah. Well, on I, I, that. I'm uh, I'm sorry, I was just caught up. Uh, apparently, Danielle Deadweiler is playing uh, Mamie Till Mobley in the Emmett Till movie, the the one who played uh, the one that you liked. The one yes, yes. Coffee. She's she's playing who? Uh, Emma Till's mom. In oh, Emma Till oh. oh. I didn't even know they were making a. I okay. didn't either. Me neither. Uh, it's but it's it's heard. probably going to be another uh, big production thing. Anyway, uh, I think this is a black exploitation movie, and I'm a big fan of black exploitation. It's yeah. the way my stepdad and I bonded. Uh, Alamo used to do a black exploitation thing every month, mm-hmm. and I, we went to every single one of them. Uh, big fan of it. I think that the style, some of the stylistic trappings of black exploitation movies are here i think the fact that it's an all black cast that are dealing with primarily black issues mm-hmm. uh even though there's the, the the looming specter of racism makes it very black exploitation-esque um and just the cut of like the way uh nat love is kind of positioned in the movie he feels like a black exploitation lead yeah to me um but you know i think he has that sort of mystique about yeah, him swaggering and, and yeah, yeah yeah and everyone ha- knows who he is before yeah. he walks into and he doesn't really have any specialty really he's just kind of good at stuff yeah which is yeah. a black exploitation thing i don't know he feels like uh he's threatening and charismatic feels like sh- he feels like a shaft esque mm-hmm. character to me um not not Definitely, nearly as yeah. much as a uh, as black dynamite black is <laughs> which is kind of the shaft turned to 11 yeah, yeah, but yeah. like there's definitely is a you know he's he walks into a bar women want to sleep with him men mm-hmm. are afraid of him Exactly. Sleek style to him, which is a good thing. And I think we we, t- we were talking about Tarantino before. Tarantino has essentially been making black exploitation movies for thirty years, mm-hmm. along with westerns. So you know, there's that. Mm, yeah, I I was I was gonna say to talk real quick about like the the plot of the movie, which is essentially that um, you know Jonathan Majors as Nat Love. Uh, the movie opens with 
his house being invaded by Idris Elba's character, mm-hmm. and without explanation, he shoots uh, uh, Jonathan's father and mother, and then scars him with a cross on his forehead, which is and really cool. It's a cool, it's a cool idea, uh, and then leaves, and then you cut, you know, however many years later, and uh, Nat Love is hunting down all the people who were there, and we and we're past that already. Mm-hmm. Like he's killed the last one, and he's convinced that Rufus Buck who is Elba's character is going to be locked away for the rest of his life. So he's satisfied. At least he's able to tell himself he's satisfied. And so by now it's like, okay, I want to go reconnect with Zossie Bates because she's Zossie Bates and (laughs) she looks the way she looks. And uh, And and we'll talk about that. (laughs) Yes, we will. Uh, uh, And I, and I want to reconnect and start a life with you. Uh, uh oh, the guy's breaking out. Um, but, anyway, but bye, babe. Right, <laughs> but the 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 crux of Rufus Buck's character here is he's not just like a money hungry, crazy outlaw. Um, he has two motivations. One, which is revealed at the end of the film, but uh, his primary one is he wants to create this black mecca in Redwood, mm-hmm. uh, and he wants it to be like a, a black owned community. Right. Is the idea, mm-hmm. and I thought that was cool. My issue with it was that most of the spaces that we had seen black characters in up to that point were entirely black so it never mm-hmm. really seemed like there was an integration sure, yeah. Yeah. issue we, we only really see an all white community mm-hmm. after and it, it's, it's literally established it's exactly. literally all white yeah, yeah. it's yeah. painted yeah. white it's un, yeah it's, uh, it looks unfinished right so that was kind of uh, i guess incongruous is the word of the day today but that's what seemed a little off mm-hmm. for me well, it's um, a polished movie to a fault yeah 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 and and i, and I would have i i, I would have bought that more um if Maybe that we had seen a bit more of the racism angle mm-hmm. pushed in the beginning of the movie. Yeah. Um. But uh, that being said, you know, we got what we got. It it, it isn't. It didn't um escape me also that you know obviously this has Regina King in it and mm-hmm. in Watchmen. Bass it, Reeves. That's what I was thinking. Oh, what? Ba- well, I mean, Bass Reeves is in in the Watchmen universe is the first superhero. Oh, right. I didn't even think about yes. that. What I was thinking about is how Watchmen opens with uh, the destruction of Tulsa, yeah. there's Oklahoma. A lot of, mm. There's actually a lot of Watchmen in this. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. should have brought Watchmen on here. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should have. Um, uh, but, yeah, so it's clearly trying to ad- uh, adopt some of that. They're actually opening, like, a Redwood exhibition downtown in Manhattan. Wow. Um, it was a real thing. It was a real place. I think well, I, I didn't. I don't know, know whether either. or not it was a real place, but I think they're recreating the set somehow. Oh, interesting! Or, oh, from the movie. I oh, think so. I see, yeah. I, see, I, see. Um, I love that yourself. one uh, sheriff character who, who's like giving the oh, uh, like Dion evil Cole? monologue, like "You better get out of here before I finish my steak." Dion Cole, and it's really yeah. close to his face in the movie. Oh, yeah. Like, For, as as like the best part of Blackish, Dion Cole. Yeah, that's where I recognized him yeah. from. Yeah, he's he's okay. There are so many actors in Blackish that you're like, if you just got out of this Kenya Barris prison. <laughs> He'd be a movie star. <laughs> and <laughs> it's it's escape. him. It's uh Marseille Martin. It's yeah. uh the kid that looks like my brother. Uh it's it's it all, it's 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 all of these people. And Dion Cole has like what, a three minute scene? Yeah. And he's great. Like it's, he's well, that's, he, that's he maybe my back. favorite he, part he of the movie yeah. is, is is when he's punching his gold teeth out and he's like, Come on, kids, he, I struck gold. Yeah. <laughs> Go yeah. grab this grab um, the gold, bring it to your mama. Idris Elba, by the way. The, the southern accent slipping a little bit. It's a British accent. We it always for me. Yeah, yeah. It's it's fine. He sounds menacing. We always let him slide. He's, it, he's the still thing a good is, actor. everyone is menacing, and it, it kind of gets like a little it's a like little exhausting. Over. And I was every gonna, single character gives like a hyper threatening monologue, and yeah. they're really close to the camera. And it's a and little it's like, too long. Shit, like we're Regina every King's single monologue character. is a little too long. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. And 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 that's one of the other things. Thank you for reminding me, Dan. Is that I, I felt that the movie was just a bit too self serious. Mm. Yeah. Just a bit like i didn't mind you telling every you know, character is the story. pulpiest character that's ever existed exactly yeah and 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 it would be it would have been nice to have a bit more humor within the movie and not yeah, just yeah. relegated to a few characters yeah. for the comic relief. And, and it's weird that part of the movie is weird because it's like the the movie f- tonally feels like it's kind of at a crossroads there's moments where regina king shows up and says things and i'm like that doesn't sound like someone from 1866, <laughs> like where she's like, "We're not nincompoops either." I'm like, "You got even a word that I'm like, exists." I'm like, they break you, the fourth wall. I'm like, a lot, "You guys like, should be called niggas all the time." Yeah, yeah. The slavery was a day ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't be like, you know. But I guess the idea is, if you were liberated and you were killing people anyway, then you. Wouldn't I guess stand I'm confused about the timeline. When would slavery have been? If this is the 1800s, uh, uh, then according to Wikipedia, Nat Love was born into slavery. So okay. if he's in his 30s now, he's probably the end of the 1800s. Yeah, it's it's a mess because not a lot of these pe- not all these people lived at the same yeah. time. Yeah. 
so that you, you have to create a pocket dimension where yeah, they existed exactly. in Avengers universe. Yeah, I mean, characters. the Civil War ended in sixty five. This reminded me of like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Where it's like, what if all these historical figures had cross paths? Right, you which know? is another way that it is very Tarantino. Yeah, uh, it is very and, Tarantino. And of course, the Django comparisons are here. You know, Wes and I were talking before you before you got here, yeah. um, Dan. I uh, was actually thanking Justin for not bringing Django. No, I wouldn't do that to y'all. I don't. <laughs> I, I, you know, everyone knows Django, but um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean. Well, it's someone getting shot and doing like five flips in the air. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that type stuff. of stuff. Now, speaking of the characters, the characterizations, uh, returning really quickly to Stagecoach Mary, who was played by Zossie Bates, there was, I remember, a bit of a, a controversy swirling when she was cast because the real life uh, Mary, I forget what her last name was. I can look it up for you. But uh, the real life Stagecoach Mary was a dark skin black woman yeah. and and Zossi is not that and it's just you know these recurring things right and it, it, you know it's i mean james samuel is a black director but i don't know what the production team behind this mary like. fields mary fields right. thank you um uh when was she born by the way she was born in 1832 right so all the idea is that all these people are like emancipated slaves or yeah. most of them are mm-hmm. um uh you, but don't, you it, don't get that inkling at all slavery is not necessarily talked about yes yeah. I, wish, I mean i guess it it, it, it necessarily it doesn't necessarily need no. to be i'm sure they would have felt like that would have weighed it down yeah but, uh, but, but, but it's oh, already pretty it's already pretty i was just kind of confused about like stage their backgrounds coach, and stuff stage coach right. mary was 20 years older than nat luck yeah, yeah. so See, it could it really could have been monique well, like when, when Nat Love is like a kid and like his his mom is like the hottest woman you've ever seen and like, and like their house is so polished yeah. and like little it, picturesque like bowls of fruit and, yeah. and fixtures and stuff it just I don't know and a dog runs by and is like hey guys yeah. feels yeah. feels very like po- like it makes sense that he would have been doing like music videos and stuff cause yeah kind of what it feels like yeah so Cynthia Erivo Wesley Snipes and Sterling K Brown were all originally cast in the film but exited during. T- Caused by the pandemic. I'm sorry, I can't read. Uh, so Cynthia Erivo. So this was shot during COVID. Cynthia, I, I, I guarantee you, Cynthia Erivo was not stagecoach Mary. I feel like that would. That's just not the case. Could it? Could she? I been? mean, she's around the same age as as Zassi, and that would have been interesting. It, I mean, at least you have the what? Because the thing is, like you know, I guess what's what becomes kind of numbing about it is that you get you, you have all this fanfare around these right. like diverse casts, but then you you still have to like sneak in. The aesthetically pleasing, you know, mm-hmm. light skinned black woman. It, Fanfare is interesting because this felt like fan fiction to me. It did. Right. It, well, yeah. it is. I yeah. Mean, it yeah. Just flat out is. It, I mean, and also, Justin, along with that, there's a weird story, and I don't even know if the creators even like clock this themselves. Not that I'm so much smarter than the guys that wrote the script, but like, <laughs> there's a bit where Regina King tells this fucking long ass story about yeah. a fat girl who beat up her sister. And she sliced her, and it's neck. weird. It's extra weird because we know what stagecoach Mary actually looked like. She was mm-hmm. a big she, woman. She, yeah, yeah, and it was like it's kind of like this feels like an intentional uh, swipe uh, or an intentional. Like it, 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 it reads much worse than it could have read. Especially if they had cast considering it well. that uh, Regina King's character did not it was not a real life woman. No, that was yeah. one that they entirely fabricated yeah. for the movie. Yeah. Um. And 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 then it's also weird. It's like okay, because at first, just based on her performance when she was coming into the train, I thought like, oh, she's like Idris Elba's like that's her man. Like <laughs> like you know when she's all excited for. I thought they were gonna be like a love interest. They don't really go there. With I, that I didn't really know what was going on between them because he he makes her uh, like swear that loyalty to him. Right, like I, in I that assume bar together. They're together. He like rests his hand head on I her. The way that he embraces her seems intimate in a way that like him touching his head to Lakeith, like you can tell there's a difference. It in seems the like intimacy. every character in this movie has like an unspoken history with yeah. every other character. Exactly. And it's just kind of which they have to do because they didn't exist at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They have to. Cur- I mean, and it's fine. Like I don't mind. I. Part of me is kind of like we really didn't have to have them be real characters. You mm-hmm. could have taken Nat Love and Bass Reeves and set a story and just made a story around it sure. because those are two cowboy names that I recognize. Like mm-hmm. I know those two names. The rest of them, like who, who cares? Just and make, and make there's also been Nat Love stuff before. Yeah, um, has there? Apparently, yeah. Michael K. Williams played him once. Uh, what? Oh, really? On, I think it was like a TV movie um, in the Cherokee Dead Kid. Wood? The Cherokee Kid and uh, die, they die by dawn. Yeah, is, yeah, is another western. Okay. I don't know why I said Deadwood. They Die by Dawn has another a pretty crazy cast. It has Michael K. Williams, Erica Badu as stagecoach, yes. Mary, uh, Rosario Dawson, Isaiah Washington, Jesse Williams, Henry Lennox, and uh, Justin's father, 
John Carlo Esposito. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> yeah, that's my dad. Uh, Ernie Hudson also played him in the Cherokee Kid. Ernie Hudson's great. That he's guy the best. He's always more work. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I enjoyed this movie more than I've enjoyed ninety percent of the movies that have come out this year. Fair. Yeah, no, it's uh, a lot of fun. But uh, you know, I think I think if it had gotten a little bit grimier, if they'd gotten a couple more unknowns, if R. J. Seiler hadn't gotten shot through the cheek. Uh, <laughs> that was a joke. I, I think um, I'm done with like the Western as Tarantino kind of thing. I, yeah. I wish people would try and do it more like Leone moving forward. I, I wish it feels I, filthy and I, nasty. Yeah, it, it, they all feel so clean. And, yeah. and the, we've gotten maybe, we've gotten a lot of Westerns in the last Even decade. Even their clothes are like in perfect condition. They look like God looks Idris like is wearing this designer like red yeah. velvet <laughs> duster. It, it like looks like where one calls the heart, the show on Lifetime that's supposed uh, to take place yeah. in like the same era but in Canada. Uh, and they're just wearing like really nice clothes. He's put some stains and Good shit. Gucci. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't understand. But, you know. Yeah, I mean, I could see myself, um, we can we can rate it. Uh, you know, I, I, I think um, uh, I could see myself cutting it back on, you know. Uh, yeah. And it's, 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 yeah, it's it's nice to watch. It's, it's like inoffensive. I was ex- enough, it's exactly I guess. what I was about to say. Mm-hmm. Like, there's nothing uh, too hard to, like, consume. Mm-hmm. And it's got some cool uh, cosplay ideas in it, sure. too. Yeah. You know, sure. you could do some stuff with this. Lakeith is the fastest gun in the West. And right. We we and, I, and I will say the interesting thing about his character is that what they seem to... Uh, a reveal is that he's only the fastest because he cheats every yeah, time. Like yeah. he doesn't. Why actually, do they always count so slow? Yeah, he jumps the count or he right. shoots people in the back. So like he's not actually the fastest. He's just the most devious. Which mm-hmm. they we learn when he slices that dude's uh, legs <laughs> legs uh, to ribbons in the on the train. Um, so you know uh, that felt very comic booky. Yeah, it did. But Cuffy being the one to to kill him was was pretty cool. Yeah, that was cool. Um, but uh, yeah, how about you? You give your rating first, Wes. Yeah, I'll give it a. I'll give it a, a solid three crosses carved into your <laughs> forehead out of five. Got it. Is it me? Yeah. yeah. It's like a 16 high fashion designer uh, <laughs> cowboy outfits out of 24. Got it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give it, um, yeah, I'll give it three and a half uh, Zossi Bates musical numbers. Out of five, she there's some singing in this movie. Some of yes. it I, I understand. Like this may be the only actual allusion to the to the slavery. They have like a lot of spirituals mm-hmm. that they kind of right. hum and like you know folk mm-hmm. tunes and yeah, stuff. Yeah. But mm-hmm. it her her coming into the saloon singing kind of made me laugh. <laughs> what you doing? And then, I like and that insert of her banging <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> and then she's like she's up. like get out of here. Uh, and then he just goes upstairs and she's like, ah, it's fine. Yeah, we'll have <laughs> sex now. I do I do admit I like that line where uh, she kisses him to remind you of what it was and then decks him to <laughs> remind you what it is. Yeah, I thought that was that cool. Was cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those were our thoughts on The Harder They Fall. Cool. Uh, and now we're going to talk about Dynamite! Boom. Dynamite! Dun, dun, dun. Wow. <laughs> you guys did it. All right, you jive turkeys. We're talking about Black Dynamite, the 2009 American black exploitation parody action comedy starring Michael Jai White, Tommy Davidson, and Sally Richardson. It was directed by Scott Sanders and co-written by Michael Jai White along with some other folks. Um, now, to give some background as to why I chose this, um, I was very, I was between a few things to pair with The Heart of They Fall, like I said. Uh, part of me was thinking about Tombstone, uh, which mm-hmm. is an old uh, ensemble cowboy movie with our boy Kurt Russell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a favorite of mine. Part of me was thinking about Posse, which was directed by Mario Van Peebles, the son mm-hmm. of Melvin, who mm-hmm. passed away. Rest in peace. Um, but I decided to go with this because I'd never seen it. Uh, also because, shout out to my boy Jude from Harlem's Really Own podcast. He basically requested that we do it. Um, <laughs> of, of he, he thought he it would be, <laughs> he thought it'd be an interesting conversation. Did. It's so fucking classic. Yeah, and so I said, I said, well, why don't we do this? It seems like it'll be fun to talk about, and boy, was I right. Um, this has become <laughs> like um, one of the go-to like uh, Adult Swim, like late night movies to uh, show. Yeah. It has a like, lot of Adult Swim vibes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, it, it kind of is like a stoner classic. Yeah. When, when you, I mean, it it's so is just off the fucking wall, and some of the humor is like mean spirited, but like in a really funny way. Yeah, um, yeah. I uh, so I, I'm excited to to get into it, but uh, first we'll do these these letterbox reviews. Wes, how great. Did you so uh, I have a, a four star review from Kate Knowles that says really feeling really stupid for being so surprised by the titties in the intro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, most of these uh, reviews, by the way, are just lines just from quotes. the movie, which is what yeah. my review is. That's what sure my review is. Too. Um, 
Uh, a three and a half star review from Cinemonster says a lovingly conceived and well crafted homage to all things that were great and not so great about black exploitation. Michael J. White was born to play this role, not a send up as the creators truly love the genre. Dynamite. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, and, the <laughs> and the last one is, of course, a four and a half star review from Groove Man that says, shh, mama, you're going to wake, wake, wake up, up the rest of the, of the bitches. bitches. I was just about to quote that. <laughs> Black so, Dynamite, that's the best I've ever had. <laughs> Quiet, mommy. Don't wake up the rest of the bitches. <laughs> so let's, uh, Dan, why don't you, you start with it? Because you had seen this before. Uh, this was like a fever dream because because uh, I watched this at one of my best friend's house mm-hmm. uh, houses growing up. Uh, it, it was just like on Adult Swim late at night, and I was really tired, but like we watched the whole thing. And, like, <laughs> no. We were laughing the whole time, but but I remember like little sight gags, like um the boom mic like falling into frame, yeah. like, oh like my Michael J. God. White like looking at it out of the corner of his <laughs> eye, but like continuing to talk, and then like him jumping out of the helicopter at the end, and he, and he's like uh he's like cream corn, and, and he's he's just like laying down flat on like a green screen, yeah. and, and they're like manipulating it to make it look like he's like flowing through the air. It's yeah. a very funny effect. <laughs> um, and then you know malt liquor shrinking black men's penises. And <laughs> oh it's, my like, God. it's like a conspiracy from like the white alcohol industrial complex or, or something like that. <laughs> that was like all that I remember. Oh, and so I, I was pleasantly surprised to learn like the whole thing is is that insane and that funny. Were uh, you were you familiar with black exploitation when you w- first watched it? When I first watched it, I, I, I had heard of like Black Mama, White Mama and like Shaft and like yeah. all these like prison movies from like the 70s and shit that kind of have those uh like genre trappings but i never like watched one sweet sweet back another sweet sweet back Peebles. Uh, the first black exploitation movie yeah. i could say mm. is it yeah, yeah. It one of the, it was back. one of the earliest that's how i learned of it is is one of the first i haven't like, watched that yet i just got the melvin uh, van people's criterion box i haven't watched that yet yeah, i need to check out that in a uh, watermelon Oh, Wes is going to bring that on the show uh, for passing for the new that's coming out. Passing, it's a real, uh, it's a real interesting pair. Um, this is your first time, Wes. This is my first time. Uh, thank you so much for bringing this on the show, Justin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the greatest thing about this movie is it's actually not even close to being the worst black exploitation movie right, because they right. get so bad. There's yeah. literally a black exploitation movie called Doctor Jekyll and Mister Black. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking awesome. Um, Thi- but this movie is like an encapsulation of all of the best and worst things about Black Exploitation. Yeah. Michael J. White, the, the genius of this performance is he's so committed to the bit. Yeah, he's so committed. You really buy him to yeah. the bit, and he looks like he could have been right. Yeah, Richard Roundtree yeah. in <laughs> 1970. Um, no, this is so much fun, guys. I mean, like I can't even. Like and then he fucking kills Richard Nixon. Like mm-hmm. no, he doesn't kill Richard Nixon. <laughs> yeah. The guy, the guy doing the Nixon impression is so fucking funny. Funniest fucking thing ever. Oh, black dynamite! Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, black dynamite! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my yeah. god! And then he the the fake Black Panthers. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, yeah. listen, I'm more radical than all of you. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. This this uh this movie was a real trip. This was one of those movies that like. I very quickly realized, oh, I shouldn't have pressed play on this while I'm in public right. because <laughs> I'm sitting in the library on at Pace University and then he's th- it's just a porn scene straight up in mm-hmm. the first five minutes. And I'm like, how can I angle myself so no one sees what I'm exactly. watching? Um, but even then, like it, it actually took me until him standing up and, and, the, and the zoom out and then the boom mic for me to realize, oh, this yeah. is like. This is a joke. Like the whole, it's yeah. not just a, sh- it's not a comedy that's playing it straight like Undercover Brother, uh, with Eddie Griffin. Um, it's like actually just full parody. And I think, I think I'm glad that I didn't know that going in mm-hmm. because then the whole thing was like, okay, how far are they going to take it? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the 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 basic premise here is that you have. Uh, Michael Jai White as Black Dynamite, who is the consummate black exploitation uh, protagonist. Mm-hmm. He's he knows everything that he needs to know at any given moment. He is equal parts uh, radical, revolutionary, uh, uh, kung fu master, Vietnam vet, Vietnam vet, black ops specialist. Black uh, Dynamite, I've been teaching my bitches kung fu just like you suggested. <laughs> <laughs> All the sex workers know kung fu. <laughs> 
Yeah, um, and, and then, then the <laughs> private investigator. He cleans up the, he cleans up the town and yeah. it becomes a suburb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, yeah, this review is basically just like a best of because like yeah. I, I love when um he's their kids and like he's talking to his brother and he's like I'm 16 year old black dynamite and you're my 13 year old brother I've got to get you off this how smack. About, how about the guy, <laughs> the black the black panther who always says the screen directions? Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. He's like. Grabs black dynamite angrily. Oh. Hey, black dynamite! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I missed. How did I miss I that? I caught that because I have the subtitles on. Dude, <laughs> enter stage left. Black dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, Bullhorn, uh, the character who rhymes everything. Oh um, my god! And there's this. Group you know, you know what that character? I, I'm quite sure is based on. Yeah. There's a GI Joe from the original show Roadblock, uh, who. Dwayne Johnson plays in the movie. Oh, yes. But everything he does is a rhyme. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, I'm going to be Cobra. Uh, I don't know how to yeah, rhyme No, no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to rhyme it. But something like that. You know what I should mean? Should have prepped that one. I um, should have. I really should have. Hey, Roadblock, you ever seen a man die before? You ever seen a man cry before? They, there it <laughs> is. He <laughs> starts crying. Yes. I don't know, but yeah, he's basically, Black Dynamite's whole thing is, I'm, okay, I'm going to clean up the streets. Uh, I'm going to get drugs off the streets. And then he finds out that his brother was murdered, um, and then he's pursuing that investigation for a while, yeah. which leads to him finding out there's this vast conspiracy uh, with this particular brand of malt liquor. I love uh, how they come to the conclusion. It's, dude, it's like the most convoluted, like just <laughs> disparate, like <laughs> threads that they're like loosely connecting. Yeah. It's so f- it goes on for like five minutes. It's too. so funny. Um, yeah, they find out that this malt liquor is being used to to shrink the black man's penis. Uh, which is really, and then they kill him. They're like, does he even want to live? Yeah, <laughs> they find one of their because his dick is only like four inches now. Yeah, <laughs> can't do. You may as well that. be dead if it's four inches. <laughs> <laughs> but, but moving on. <laughs> um, what am I even supposed to say to this? <laughs> <laughs> but um, to kind of contrast this with the harder they fall, real quick, in terms of its approach to like themes of black life, mm-hmm. right? What's interesting is how this, obviously as a parody, like this movie isn't really trying to provide any sort of major commentary, Mm -hmm. but I think maybe part of the relief for me was just like watching a movie just throw all this stuff in the air and let it fall. Like like completely not care. Like exactly the the idea that that he cleans up the neighborhood and it turns into a (laughs) suburb and then he's walking with, uh, with, uh, with his, with his, his, his his side piece. And he and you know she's like oh my god black dynamite like I'm so glad that you know we were able to do this and he's like well listen baby there was, there's no I in revolution in team <laughs> <laughs> the two <laughs> kids run up and they're like hey I heard my daddy my name daddy black name dynamite. black dynamite <laughs> <laughs> Sally Richardson by so the way weird. this is what she looks like currently she's so hot she's incredible. beautiful incredible she's beautiful yeah. hadn't s- haven't seen her in anything else but I mean, um, but I will be <laughs> searching for the lookout yeah. Yeah. the best is when they're about to have sex and. <laughs> it turns into the Gemini. The, the yeah, Gemini they calendar. just go through the whole zodiac and <laughs> the positions they're in. I, I, oh my god, this movie is. This movie only made two hundred thousand dollars at the box office. I don't think they were that's ready a, for this. No, they weren't yeah. ready for it. On a budget of two not, two point nine million, that's crazy, man. That, like, the, that's, the budget being that high is kind of crazy. Well, they, yes. I think it's they crowd fund, I think budget. they crowdfunded it. Really? Yeah. In two thousand nine, this had to have yeah. been like a, a passion but, but, project. But also has just like one of the best lineups of like black comedians. Yeah, it has like Tommy. Who plays Cream Corn? I'm uh, running things. <laughs> <laughs> who, play, who plays it? <laughs> I'm looking it up. Tommy Davidson. Tommy yeah. Davidson. Uh, Oscar Proud plays him. Um, oh, okay. And then Ar- Arsenio Hall is Tasty Freeze. Mm. <laughs> uh, this, this guy, this the guy is the worst review ever. It's just us being like, <laughs> yeah, wow, I love yeah, this yeah, movie. I mean, what no, can you do? But it's like... If you hate this movie, you're a fucking weenie. <laughs> <laughs> How do you hate Black there's, Dynamite? There's someone uh, sitting there who's like, you know, Black Dynamite is destroying the black community. <laughs> <laughs> right, it probably is. I mean, and um, Justin and I went to college with him. Yeah, more than likely. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's obviously it's difficult to like really... <laughs> walk through this movie um but uh there is of course the uh the climax where they they land on this like v- vietnam like stand in island <laughs> with the with the like some yeah. sort of like crazy i guess like just <laughs> ungovernmented uh, uh place and they have um uh the evil doctor fiendish doctor Wu. oh yes that he runs into and and before they before they get there like you know they they land here and they're doing all this guerrilla warfare stuff 
And then, like, all of a sudden, like, one of Black Dynamite's uh, teammates starts, like, relaying his life goals to him. He's like, I, you know, when we get back, I'm retiring from the revolution. That's the I'm guy, that's the guy who says the stage directions. <laughs> he's like, he goes, hand Black Dynamite the picture. Here's the picture, Black Dynamite. <laughs> and, then, and then he's like, and then, and then and you see Michael J. White start looking around. Like, <laughs> and, then, like, and then he gets a spear through the chest. And Michael's yeah. like, who saw that come? I mean. Who saw where that came from? Like, <laughs> it's just, it's so many <laughs> funny moments uh, in this movie like that. The movie itself is like one big fourth wall break. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's literally a part where um, he's, he, they're having like a stage fight and he smacks the guy on accident. He's like, motherfucker. And, they, and, yeah. they cut, and it's another guy in his costume, guy. like yeah. smash cut. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the cool thing about it is the movie clearly has such a love for black exploitation movies i love movies that take the form of the thing that they're either mimicking mm-hmm. or making fun of it so rarely happens like like those i know we like the conjuring movies here but the conjuring movies conjuring. are supposed to be 70 70s uh ghost movies and they look like they were made yeah. in 2008 exactly yeah. and there's there's no attempt to mimic 1970s amity except for the one part where the daughter says yeah wow that sounds pretty groovy yeah, yeah. <laughs> and everyone in the theater laughs it always it always bothers me when they don't when they don't commit to the bit. Exactly. Like, if you're going to do it, commit to the bit. Mm. And they, and this I mean, one is, you know. You know, yeah, I mean, not to make this segment a review of a bunch of other movies, but it happens on this show all the time. Uh, <laughs> when I rewatched Iron Giant a little bit ago, I was thinking about how, like, it's able to be an homage to 50s and 60s mm. sci-fi while also yeah. making itself mm. one of the, an entry exactly. in that mm-hmm. <clears throat> catalog. Yeah, it has to, you so, have to be able to do both. Right, even though it's obvious it came out in the, in the 90s, yeah. but... With blacks, uh, with blacks dynamite, <laughs> yeah, with, with the, black dynamite, with the blacks dynamite. It it is. Uh, I think it kind of achieves the same thing. I guess the only thing that holds it back is that it it's it's winking, right? It's mm-hmm. winking at the audience the whole time in a way that like I don't know that a lot of black exploitation movies are really doing. They, they more often well, yeah, not taking themselves parody. seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So that's why like. I guess that's the question. Like, can a parody it is to exist like shaft in the genre? What scary movie was to scream? Mm-hmm. You know, mm, yeah. Kind of just, but, but I mean, scary movie kind of stands on its own. People, people love that movie without having seen Scream. And mm-hmm. like, I've never watched Shaft, but I love this movie. I think you, it's you gotta, you gotta watch Shaft. I need to I see know, it too. I probably uh, Shaft was actually they were. Uh, they I were, saw it at the Apollo. That's they the were first playing? time I saw wow. it. Yeah, they were with play- the live. That was Shaft. probably the thing that I missed because yeah. I wanted to get tickets to it. But the thing about Shaft uh, is <laughs> Shaft and Sweet Sweet Back, but more Shaft are actually like really good films. Like they're really well made films. And you and they have like the DNA of what would later be like comedically black mm-hmm. exploitation, but are done like straight, like yeah. in like I have seen Ganja and Hess. Ganja and Hess is also black exploitation, yeah. but that's also I've definitely seen that. One. But I think I think like it's very easy to look at something like Shaft and be like, oh, Shaft. But Shaft yeah. is like, you know, photographed by Gordon Parks. Like mm-hmm. that's he directed. Like it's a great, it's a great looking. No, I've movie. seen bits and pieces. Of yeah, it. yeah. Uh, but I mean, this movie takes all the stuff that's in that yeah. and turns it up to like. Fifty-five. Well, one of the one of the questions I had coming into this, uh, really one of the only I guess formal questions I had for y'all is because I'm looking at Michael J. White in this, and you know, the interesting thing about his career, and you know, I don't know him as a person, and I don't necessarily know if he's the easiest person to work with or whatever, but it seems like he's always been just on the on, on the, the outskirts of, of mainstream popularity, yeah. Yeah. and I wonder, like, yeah. Spawn. Right, Spawn. but you, it, it makes me wonder, like, what you know, why is that? I mean, he has a star power. I, I like Call Fast. I mean, we were just talking about Nathan Fillion a couple of weeks ago. He's yeah. a very similar case yeah. where where Michael J. White, White was was fan casted as Luke Cage. You're an A-lister for people Blade. in the know. Yeah, 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 absolutely, Dan. Like, I feel like he he's always he hasn't had that role yet. Right. Or like Robert Englund or Tony Todd or Bruce Campbell. Yeah, like I think if. Spawn had actually hit the last twenty years of his career might have been different. Sure, but I think I think as it stands, he's Black Dynamite and the guy who gets the the, the his face carved up in the Dark Knight. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah, yeah. that's kind of oh, that's fucking yeah. wow. Yes. Wait, that yeah. is yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Where I he's knew like, so I, I weird. He's like enough from the clown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has like that's a, weird. He's like same year, twentieth build in that movie. I think, yeah. I think he's. Yeah. I think he, that's the same year. Dark Knight is 2008. What's so the name of that character? One year later. It's one year later. What's the name of that character in the Dark Knight? Because he goes, Gamble. Uh, Gamble. Gamble here won't have a uh, nickel for his grandma. And then he's like, Enough from the clown. <laughs> 
And then it's like, you know, Michael Jai White could break this dude in half, yes, but right. they just put him in a suit and make you think that, like, he's afraid of Michael Jai White. Well, well, Michael Jai White can't just stand up and snap his neck. Exactly. <laughs> That's what it would mm. be. So, I mean. Criminal warlord versus disturbed twang. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Wow. You won't believe the outcome. <laughs> yeah, it, it was just. Uh, and because I'm thinking, I'm looking then at the harder they fall, specifically this Idris Elba role, and I'm like, Michael Jai White could have played yeah, Rufus sure. Buck. Absolutely. You he know could've. what I mean? He easily been that movie's though. nowhere near as, as fun. Because cause, cause no. Black Dynamite kind of toes the line between like genuine camp and like um, a movie that, that y- I, don't, I don't know. No, like a, fu- a fully say. functioning movie. Yeah, but, 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 yeah. but the thing is, it's what we, we said before. Harder They Fall doesn't commit to the mm-hmm. Leone style enough. Yeah. It wants to be a Sergio Leone movie. But it doesn't commit to that style enough mm-hmm. to be one. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't. It's it's not grungy enough. It's not gritty. Black enough. Dynamite works as a comedy, a piece of pulp, yeah. uh, camp, and, and also something that is and genuinely and fucking and insane. And not to be <laughs> and not to be pretentious, but like also as film criticism. I mean, it's yeah. like it's criticizing black exploitation yeah. movies. It's looking yeah. back at it while clearly loving it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I and think loving the trappings. I think I think the issue is that. I mean, I don't think I don't think the harder they fall commit to, commits to the bit. Mm-hmm. I feel like it looks like a Jay Z music video, which yeah. is like fun. It definitely looks like a which music is like video. cool. Like I love Jay Z. Sometimes uh, Jay Z don't don't listen to this podcast. Funniest the funniest <laughs> thing uh, about Jay Z's involvement with that movie is him creating an Instagram account to promote it. No, he did and not. then deleting his Instagram account a day later. He <laughs> you created think he an created Instagram, that Instagram, account? Instagram account himself, or do you think uh, Blue Ivy did that? You probably she is their social she's media their manager. manager. But he Yo, posted. Yo, Blue, please. <laughs> <laughs> he put up the poster. The harder they fall, out now, and then the next day his <laughs> Instagram was gone. Harder it they was fall. like this week. It was <laughs> this one's wild for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Do you imagine Jay Z? <laughs> you imagine Jay Z on set one day at the Heart of They Fall with his Basquiat wig that he's been wearing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's just trying to wear a baseball cap on top of it. Yeah. Just, yeah. just tilting on the, that man. Oh, Jay Z. Yeah, he's doing what he's got to do. One of the greatest lyricists of all time. Also, just one but of the, the second funniest. most talented in his household. That's that's really tough because imagine being imagine being a pioneer in rap. Right. Yeah. The most popular musical genre of the last twenty years, and still being second best. <laughs> it's house. true. Yeah. 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 Um, and also having like not even the head of the house, having like, in a way <laughs> scouted her and yeah. like, Bay, I just came <laughs> home from Walgreens. Do you? D- I got the thing you wanted. I don't want to disturb you when you're yeah. working. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Let's, uh, there was, there, yeah, we can we can wrap this up, but now I'm just thinking about like Beyonce and Jay Z's relationship, and I don't know if uh, Wes or Dan y'all were. Uh, we, need to, we need to make a movie about that. <laughs> we, we do. I don't know if y'all were privy to uh, the rumors that she uh, is kind of sweet on LeBron James. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and sure. that. Um, uh, what, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask this question and ask all my friends: Which of Beyonce's songs do you think is about LeBron James? What a, what a powerful question. Probably Rocket. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I think it's partition. I think it's that's partition. A, that's a I think partition's event. about LeBron James. Because that's a, that's a song that's about having sneaky sex. Sneaky mm-hmm. sex in the back of a limo. Mm-hmm. Uh, LeBron James, president of black people. You know <laughs> <what I> mean? <laughs> He'll talk about it on the barbershop eventually. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so uh, Black Dynamite, really fun movie. Let's rate it. Um, and, and hopefully we can come back around and do a commentary on it. Because uh, it, it is such a great movie. Then. Immortal. Yeah. Immortal. It's the immortal. Best. It's it, immortal. It, it, immortal. You, you can't. You can't. You can't. You Black Dynamite and Lahane are the only <laughs> movies where we all you agreed it was immortal. You literally can't, like, you cannot replicate this movie. Yeah. Yeah, when, when I saw the microphone <laughs> in the corner of yeah. the, the thing, oh, and of his I was like... <laughs> I was like, oh, this movie's perfect. Yeah. Like, the the thing is that I think, you know, in addition to it, obviously we all love it on a personal level, but I think also formally what's cool about it is that because it's uh it's a meta genre, um, it's it's timeless in a way. Yeah. It it, yeah. it can't really be dated because it's it's commenting on that. It's yeah, commenting exactly. on a specific moment. Yeah, yeah. and I, I also and, and I believe that it would be as if I didn't know better that it would be a seventies movie. Like the harder they fall w- would never trick me into thinking it's exactly. like exactly. I started watching I started watching Black Dynamite uh w- with someone and she was like she was like, "Is this a '70s movie?" Yeah, when did yeah, this yeah, come yeah. out? And I was like, "No, it does not." Yeah, but exactly. Like it down with the harder they fall down to like just the 
the, the cinematography itself, right? The shot selection, everything is very contemporary in a way where with, with this, we're, we're pulled back. There's a lot of wide angles and just like the editing and low <laughs> angle shots yeah. Like yeah. that are not positioned correctly. Yeah, there would be <laughs> shots where he's like getting ready to punch someone and then it's the other hand. It's, you know, and, and, and like inserts of like goons like being thrown out of windows yeah. and shit. That is such like a grindhouse, like pulpy 70s thing to do. Exactly. So, I mean, it's, it's just, it's so good. I think we would, yeah, clearly, you know, the way our, our rating works is if we say immortal it's an instant recommendation yeah um definitely go watch this movie uh you won't regret it unless mm. you're a bitch watch, watch the anime too and, yeah and if you don't like it <laughs> black dynamite you're racist, if you man. don't like black dynamite you're racist you might be yeah, a yeah, racist, yeah, yeah, yeah. to be honest you might be. Hey. you're definitely a jive turkey yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. At the very Put, take your hood off and watch this movie <laughs> <laughs> i can't see through the holes <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that would have made this better is if they did a black bad boys 2-esque uh, shoot the KKK to death thing yeah. that they do in Bad Boys, <laughs> <laughs> where they throw off the hoods and start shooting them. One of the great features in recent video gaming is being able to, to tie, a, tie a yeah. clansman to the back of your horse <laughs> and drag them and throw them to an alligator in the middle of the Red song. Dead kind of ruined cowboy shit forever because it's like, man. I thought you were going to say. I just want to play <laughs> Red Dead. Literally, as soon as the harder they, they fall, fall yeah. I, I was like, I would rather be playing this game. Yeah, exactly. I was this close to putting it back in and waiting 18 hours for it for to, it to down. download I, I, again. I thought yeah. you were going to say Red Dead has ruined the KKK. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bro, yeah. remember when the KKK were fucking cool, bro? <laughs> dude, God, that's dude, what the Ks are for. Dude. <laughs> cool, 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 Klux cool. Klan. <laughs> that's cool, our next poster. Can, cool, <laughs> canarly, um... <laughs> Uh, do, do you think yeah. that if the KKK had rebranded as the Cool Klux Klan, they would have lasted longer? I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> the Cool Klux Cramps, and they were a punk band. Or something. Uh-huh. But they what? still had the hood done. One yeah. can hope. Um, but I guess that's anyway. going to do it for this episode. <laughs> um, next week, uh, our plan is to talk about Squid Game. Mm. Uh, which uh, now that the heat has died down on it, we can we can do a little bit of a deep dive on that. So uh, yeah. maybe we'll have fun. a guest, maybe not. Who maybe knows? hey, listen, we'll keep we'll keep you on your on your toes. But until then, thank you, Wayward Movie Watchers, for joining us. You can check out the back catalog, rate and review the show wherever you get it, and if you want uh, to represent us, you can check out our merch shop at the Mortician's <laughs> Marketplace. Mm. Uh, you can find out all this information on our Instagram. But um, until next time, we love you. Stay, uh, stay spooky and stay off the streets. Stay cool. <laughs> what stay does he say? Spooky and off the streets. <laughs> <laughs> it might not be, uh, it might not be possible to do at the same time. Off the streets. <laughs> Later.